From the twisted mind of Professor Dungeon Master comes the Eldritch Hack, a tabletop RPG of Lovecraftian horror with just four stats. We do a complete walkthrough and review today on Dungeon Craft. Professor Dungeon Master here. This channel is about running the ultimate game of D&D and other tabletop RPGs. And I'm Deathbringer. I'm about making fun of him and getting you to subscribe. Some time ago, my patrons asked me for a rules like Cthulhu game, so I obliged them by creating the Eldritch Hack and the Scenario Cloakhouse, both of which we will take a look at today. Eldritch Hack is a rules light RPG of Lovecraftian horror, editing by Christina Stiles. You may know her from her work on Rogue Mage RPGs or with Dungeon Crawl Classics. Art and layout is by Jason McDonald. The obvious game for comparison is Call of Cthulhu. That system is a percentile-based roll-under system. But my players are used to rolling d20s, so Eldritch Hack is a d20 roll high system. It is not an adaptation of Call of Cthulhu, although it shares similar themes and the hit points align, so you can easily adapt scenarios from one system to the other. The rules are on one page and will look familiar to anyone who plays D&D. The game master assigns a target number to a particular task. 10 is medium, 15 difficult, 20 unlikely, and you roll a 20-sided die and try to hit the target number or higher. If the task is in your character's wheelhouse, you add a stat called skill. Skill is ranked on a scale 1 to 6, with higher being more skilled. You determine your character's skill by rolling 3d6 and writing down the highest of the three numbers. When you attempt anything that aligns with your character's chosen occupation, you add your skill to the roll. That's it. That's the primary mechanic. Are you an archaeologist? Can you read ancient languages, perform research, or speak a foreign language? Yes. If there's any question, the Game Master makes a call and we move on with the game. This leads to a simple uncluttered character sheet. This one was designed by DungeonCraft Facebook member Freya Young. So thanks Freya, you are now YouTube famous. Notice there are only four stats. Skill, Sanity, Hit Points, and Lore. Hit points are determined by rolling 66 and dividing by 2 and rounding up, which will align them to pre-published Call of Cthulhu modules. Sanity, you roll 2d6 and discard the lowest die and add 3. This will give you a sanity between 4 and 9. Lore is how much you know about the occult. When you read esoteric tomes, you gain lore, which can provide insights into the monsters you may face. Money, you just have it. We don't worry about how Indiana Jones affords his plane tickets. Equipment, same thing, we just use our common sense. Does your archaeologist have a tiny little brush? Yeah. Does your PI have a revolver? Sure. Does your Arctic Explorer have a parka? I would say yes. We're not getting into the bean counting, and character creation takes only about five minutes. Occupations include author, antiquarian, archaeologist, doctor, journalist, private investigator, professor, scientist, socialite, specialist. Specialists are things like actors, stunt drivers, martial artists, etc. I also have this cool chart of Lovecraftian sounding names. If you want to design a character that sounds like they walked out of a Lovecraft story, here you go. I always found naming characters difficult, so this makes it easy. Physical and mental damage. Combat takes place in rounds. A natural 20 means extra damage. Natural 1 is a critical failure, so you drop your gun or it jams, etc. Sanity. When your character encounters a monster or a particularly traumatic event, you make a sanity test. If you fail, you lose a sanity point. If you hit zero, your character's mind has snapped and they are no longer playable. Unlike in Call of Cthulhu, there are no temporary insanity mechanics because I don't find it very fun. It often means the character misses out in the final battle. Here, you can run if you choose, but you're not compelled to act in any certain way. The game master might assign disadvantage because you're fumbling with your gun, but you're not forced to run away screaming into the night or to curl up in a fetal position. These things may happen in a Lovecraft story, but in a participatory experience, they're a lot less fun. So if you miss a sanity check, it's not debilitating. Rewards and improvement. There are three ways to reward the players. The Game Master can allow you to test against your skill. You roll a d6. If you roll higher than your current skill, your skill increases by one. You can earn one to three sanity points per session and gain up to one lore. Designing scenarios. I break down the critical elements of any horror scenario. 
the hook, the initial investigation, the complication, the turn, which imposes a time limit, the climax, and the denouement. I also include a sample scenario, the ivory box, which is this blue sidebar, and I explain how to implement each of these stages. I love how it's on just two pages. All you need to know about structuring horror and suspense is right here. Running the game. I have a list of Lovecraftian adjectives, so you could design an accursed, feted, eldritch, squamous, tentacled, unnameable being from beyond in just seconds. Searching for clues. This is my favorite mechanic. If they ask, does the bookcase have a secret door behind it? And the answer is yes. Just have them find it. Don't make a roll. We want to move the story along. You don't want to hinge your mystery on players failing a check. We also include some Lovecraftian monsters that are in the public domain, a reproducible character sheet, and a cheat sheet that puts all the key rules on one page for the Game Master's convenience. And now for my favorite part, the scenario Cloak House. The premise is a group of miserable family members who all hate each other stand to inherit a mansion and a fortune of their recently deceased uncle. Whoever can last 48 hours in Cloak House gets to split the estate. What they don't know is the uncle is a lich hidden in the basement, and their serial killer cousin has recently escaped the local sanitarium and is heading to Cloak House to kill them. Plus, they can kill each other. Player versus player is encouraged. There are various weapons hidden around the house to make this easier. I give you a timeline of events and bullet point descriptions of the various areas to make it super easy to run and eliminate the need for flipping. I present the villains on just two pages. No overly complex backstories. We don't need to know why they're evil. We just need to know they're evil and need to die. Now, this handout is great. My father was an estate attorney, so I made the language of the will as accurate as possible, and the characters are loads of fun. Ava and Sloane are sisters and mortal enemies. Ava is suspected of murdering her first husband and needs the money because she just lost everything in a stock market crash. Her sister Sloane is a washed up former movie star who wants the money because she doesn't want to get a real job, and Sloane is having an affair with Ava's current husband, Pierce. Biff is a dumb jock with an outsized sense of entitlement. Sister Mary Constance is a nun with a gambling problem who owes money to loan sharks. Dorothy is a widower who needs the money to get her child a life-saving operation. And Pierce is a leech who's married to Ava but secretly having an affair with Sloan. And he doesn't care which of them die, he just wants to get out of Cloak House with the money. All of these characters are tons of fun to play. Jason did a great job with the maps. It looks outstanding. Everything I've ever talked about on Dungeon Craft, about scenario design, having clear goals, internal and external conflicts, time limits, it's all in here. You can see my players play it on Patreon at the top tier, and it's my favorite of all my live play episodes. It is hilarious. This scenario really runs itself. A Game Master can just kick back and watch the carnage unfold. You don't even need the Lich. There's enough going on without him. And of all the scenarios I've written, I think it's the best. Thanks again to Christina and Jason for his outstanding art. It's great to showcase new talent in the field, and he really gave Eldritch a distinct, unique look. Even if you love Call of Cthulhu and you don't want to change system, I think the Game Master advice and the scenario Cloak House is worth the price of $5.99 at drive through There's a link below. Also below you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks so much to the patrons for their support. But don't go away. There's more Dungeon Craft videos coming up. May all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. You may call him Great Cthulhu. I call him Fried Calamari. To let everyone know you play games like a badass, get my t-shirt below and watch more Dungeon Craft. <laughs>